Okay, so before we start this, I gotta do something, okay? You ready for this? I, I okay. think. Kids were laughing in my classes while, while I was scheming. scheming. Oh, the masses. Yes! <laughs> the reason why I love that part of the song so much is because at the end when you're talking about folks that's clapping up in the nosebleed, that's what I think about now when I think of all my haters. Passion, Every time I go yes. sit on somebody's stage and do a little interview, I'll be like, what you doing, baby? Okay, I thought so. <laughs> So tell me a little bit about like your story growing up. I come from a single parent household. It was my mother and my grandmother actually. And so I was always, well, I was very nerdy at first. So I got picked on for being a nerd all the time, but I didn't care about that because I was like, well, I got straight A's. I'm gonna go to Harvard. Like that was the whole plan. <laughs> I was like, I'm gonna be making a whole bunch of money. Did not go to Harvard, right. clearly. But um, <laughs> when people bullied me, it was always like, I'm not the very masculine type. You know, that is just not who I am. When people would say, well, this person is gay or this, that, and the other, Kaylin was just always Kaylin. That's how my mother treated me. So like when people would put labels on stuff, I was like, I don't know what that means. You must have an incredible mom. Oh, yes. Super mom. Yeah. Yes, indeed. Because I feel like, I mean, my mom's amazing, mm -hmm. but I wish every single parent could hear exactly what like, your mom did for you, which mm -hmm. was raise you with no need to define yourself or explain yourself. If we were to send out a survey to people, I'm sure that everyone would say that they spend 90% of their time making other people comfortable. You know, and that's not in regards to being respectful or being kind or being nice, but that's just existing, you know? And I've always said this thing, it's like, I am not here to make you comfortable with who I am, you right. know? I am going to be me no matter where I go, and I don't care what you think about it, because at the end of the day, when I go down in that grave, I'm the only one going down there. You ain't going with me. I wish I could bring you with me all the time. <laughs> I need this power from like the Twitter, the Twitter world. Uh huh. And all of that. Yeah. Especially when you got social media is horrible. When you have comments where people say anything that they want oh, to, so you know, vicious. you got a whole bunch of keyboard warriors. Ain't nobody got time for that. <laughs> and it's like I don't. I need to hear that from people that are authentically, just genuinely appreciative of the art that I bring. I need like a book of Kalen. <laughs> I will take me to church with Come the book on. of Kalen. And so I've always just been, been about the work. That's all I care about. Yeah. Like, I don't care about the followers. I don't care about the likes. I couldn't even tell you what my numbers are. I care about quality over quantity. The most beautiful thing about it is being able to inspire people and to reach people at a global stance. So I put on this festival, Love Loud uh -huh. Festival, that you know about. Uh -huh. um, it's in a community that desperately needs it, Utah, which has one of the highest suicide rates mm -hmm. in the nation. Um, so we're putting on this festival to show love and acceptance for LGBTQ That's youth. Good. And I would love to fly you out and have you there if you're down. Yes. Uh, first class. Ooh. Quote me on it. Okay, <laughs> now.